ಜ್ಞಾನಗುರುಕುಲಸ್ಯ ಪರಿಸರೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಮೇಧಾದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತೆ ಪದತಲೆ ವಯಂ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸಮೇತ ವಿಶೇಷೇನ ಋಷ ಥಾಣೇಶ್ವರ ವಚಃ ಶ್ರೋತು ತಸ್ಯ ಆನುಭವಿಕ ವಚಃ ಶ್ರೋತು ವಯಂ ಸಮೇತ ತಸ್ಯ ಸಹ ಸಪರಿವಾರ ಸಮಗತ ಆಗತ ಅನ್ಯೇ ವೇದವಿಜ್ಞಾನಗುರುಕುಲೆ ಸಪ್ತ ವರ್ಷಾ ಅತ್ರ ಪಠಂತ ತೆ ಛಾತ್ರ ಅಪಿ ವರ್ತಂತೆ ತೆಭ್ಯ ಯೆ ಪಾಠಯಂತ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ತೆಪಿ ಅತ್ರ ಸಂಪಸ್ಥಿತ ಸರ್ವೇಭ್ಯ ಅಹಂ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾಪಕ್ಷ ಹಾರ್ದ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ವ್ಯಾಹರಾ ತಥೈವ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾಪಕ ಗುರುಕುಲ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾಪಕೆ ಅನ್ಯತಮ ಸಂತ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರಥಮಾಗ ವೇದಾಂತೆ ನ್ಯಾಯೆ ಆಧುನಿಕ ವಿಷಯು ಚೃತಪರಿಶ್ರಮ ತೇಪಿ ಅದ ಅಸ್ಮಿ ಸಹ ವರ್ತಂತೆ ಸ್ಥಾಣೇಶ್ವರ ಬಹು ನಿಕಟತೆಯ ತೇ ಜಾನಂತಿ ತಾದೃಶಿ ಸಂಪಸ್ಥಿತ ತೇಭ್ಯ ಅಪಿ ಅಹಂ ಸಮೇಷಾಂ ಪಕ್ಷ ಸ್ವಾಗ ವ್ಯಾಹರ ದತ್ತಪ್ರಸಾದ ಮಹೋದಯ ಥಾಣೇಶ್ವರ ಸಂಕ್ಷೇಪಕ ಪರಿಚಯ ಕರೋತಿ ಅನಂತರ Namaste everyone, a uh, warm welcome to you and we are deeply fortunate uh, to be in this uh, presence of uh, these two great Acharyas and also uh, adding to it to be in a Gurukula uh, Veda Patrashala. Uh, as you know this program is jointly organized by Indika Yoga and uh, Veda Vijnana Gurukula. So I invite you all of you for this uh, wonderful opportunity to listen to Acharya Ji today. Uh, just to give you a brief introduction as and you will not take much time because we are running out of the time just give a little brief introduction about the uh, indica and about acharya ji and then hand over to you uh, indica is a platform which uh, organizes uh, various uh, yoga and other indic knowledge system program uh, both online and offline so this is one of the guest lecture event organized along with indica and uh, veda vignana gurukula as acharya ji was uh, in india and we wanted all of us to get to a chance to listen to you and uh, you know uh, know more about him and also about his wisdom uh, because it's very difficulty to get uh, to sit near a teacher and listen to him uh, we may read about a guru we may read about his uh, things but to sit near and listen to him uh, in a such a auspicious place in a such a day is always a great blessing so we are deeply grateful to you acharya ji for taking your time i know his was schedule is quite busy to many <laughs> programs but he agreed to be here and i'm sure he was also been to this place earlier uh, he was known from uh, other team members of uh, gurukula so we are deeply grateful to you for accepting the invitation coming here uh, on behalf of indica and veda vignana gurukula to deliver this class today i'll just take a brief thing for those of you who don't know about acharya ji i'll just take few minutes to introduce about him then so, so acharya ji comes from the long lineage of uh, vedic uh, pandits devoted shaivas and uh, kali aradhaka acharya ji hails from nepal and uh, he is traditionally trained and consecrated with uh, sarva adhikara and the sarva samrajya diksha and authorized as the shaiva acharya with the nepali sarva manya order of diksha gurus acharya ji has dedicated his life himself to the goal of preserving the traditions he has inherited in a modern and institutionalized way in his pursuit he has the founder of tantric department of nepal sanskrit university in kathmandu and also the academic he works written and spoken extensively on shastric traditions as a subject in the global scenarios he is also the founder of uh, vimarsha foundation working towards goal of preserving the classical shastric and sadhana training and many of you know he is also the uh, professor in st david <coughs> university in uh, usa and uh, many more traditions many more uh, you know things about him Uh, without much taking time i request acharya ji to share your thoughts to us namaste <coughs> 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 
निरसंसा पूर्णा अहमिति पूरा भाषयति दुशाखा महाशास्ते तदनु च विभक्त निज कलाम स्वरूपादुन्मेष प्रसरण निमेष स्थिति जुष तदद्वैतम वंदे परम शिव शक्त्यात्म निखिल आई एम हम्बल टू बी हियर विथ यू इन फ्रंट अफ ऋषि रामचंद्र भट्ट महाभाग सो मेनी साधक जन साधिकज महाबलेश्वर वेद वेदांत पारायण एंड समटाइम्स इन लाइफ व्हेन द गुड मोमेंट कम्स वी मिस इट आफ्टर ट्वेंटी इयर्स अफ टाइम वी रियलाइज द बेस्ट मोमेंट अफ लाइफ पास्ट विदउट अस इवन नोइंग इट आई एम टेलिंग यू द स्टूडेंट्स बिकज इफ यू आर thinking you are waiting for the best moment of your life now is the time there is no moment in life than being in gurukula and i'm saying this because just like you are here i also grew up and got education in the gurukula and no matter how far i have been to gurukula is always the dearest thing in my life and the sweetest of the memories i carry with me is the memory with my friends and our shastra adhyana our koti sthapana in the gurukula i'm given a topic today to discuss on the philosophy of tripura sundari this some of you wanted to listen to one topic and the others to others so therefore it doesn't matter whatever we talk about ultimately it is the same thing it's just many different languages to talk the same thing so the very uh, word should not should not make you confused i've confronted about these agamic teachings even within my own gurukula very much rigid on sankara parampara and little hesitant to include the agamas because uh, we never know what these tantras are going to do to our pristine brahmana uh, uh, veda days students but you know as bhagavad pada shankaracharya established the monasteries he also established the sri vidya parampara he did not just compose the bhashyas he also taught agamas and whether whether the bhagavad pada the first or any of the shankaracharyas i do not want to go into nitty gritty historical details but whichever the one shankaracharyas have written saundarya lahari and prapancha sara tantra besides many other tantras they are all shankaracharyas that much i can say so the integration of veda and agama integration of vedanta and tantra is the heart of bharatiya sadhana parampara and for us to carry on that lamp forward we need to deeply reflect on what it means for us to study the vedas at the same time to maintain the sadhana talking about tripura sundari tripura let's us first on because i want to go to the subject matter tripura easy definition is tribhya pura beyond the triad beyond the structure that comes into three but also trishu purushu bhava see who resides in all three citadels or cities we have become more of a transcendentalist advaita vedantis 
and we have forgotten the immanence. That is why I have focused the side that is not focused much. The immanence of the mother. Her presence right here in front of us. Our presence in this body. That does not mean that this is the only reality. Tripura, the word plays both ways. She who resides in all the triadic manifestations, she who transcends all the triadic manifestations. So it is both the philosophy of immanence and transcendence. The philosophy of immanence is not the philosophy of physicalism, is not the philosophy of materialism. There is a subtle difference. The philosophy of immanence is our ability to recognize pure consciousness, recognize pure being, recognize pure bliss unfold in the myriads of forms. Everything in every mode of manifestation as enveloped by the mother. That is the philosophy of immanence. The philosophy of transcendence is the philosophy of how the absolute transcends the triadic structure. And we do not need a new idea, new founder for this. You can just stress it in the Purusha Sutta. Tripad Urdha Udait Purusha Pado Seha Bhavat Punaha Tato Visham Bhaknama We are always confused with given new words and fail to recognize the depth in which the Rishi is reached. So, whatever the metaphor, the manifestation of Trivikrama carries or the triadic structure carries. We in the Sarva Amnaya do not teach a practice of Tripura Sundari without completing the course on the Durga or some of the other manifestations because first you want to learn three Pura, understand what is the three. Before you go to the beyond, learn what you are trying to get beyond. What is the Trigunatmakam Jagate? Mattaha Prakriti Purushatmakam Jagate, Shunyamcha, Shunyamcha. It's of me. But this is not a type of kajation. You need to know that is like um, emergent structures where the cause and effect are very different. They call emergentism, we call utpatti bada, just a different terminology. <coughs> this is a parinama transformation, but parinama not like the transformation of the milk into curd. It is a transformation of gold into chain and the ring and so and so many different forms, a change of the clay into myriads of forms of pictures and pots and all these matkas and you know kulfis and everything you have. How to recognize the presence of Tripura Sundari is to recognize this unfolding of the absolute in our immanence, in our physical presence. Somebody very tired of the world said the world is all illusion, it's all empty, nothing is real, and got frustrated, went to forest, bitten by mosquitoes. And many others started saying, that is what Guru said. 
and we have been living in this deception. Why deception? It's because we want to enjoy the world also. We also have real estate and house and job and family and partners and everything, name and fame and money and investment and everything. And then our spiritual life begins with this is all illusion. I'm not attached. I don't need any of this. A real spiritual seeking begins with honesty and sincerity. We do not need to say the world is nothing, I don't care. You care. You don't care if you have reached to that state. I'm not trying to drag you down. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we have to start the journey through negation right away. Let's enjoy, let's have a little fun in the manifestation of the mother. She has given this amazing world. I'm trying to bring you to the Shakta world a little bit. I hope it is okay with you. It's the mother. I'm, 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 I grew up in a house where my mother, we didn't have servants to cook for. My mother cooked the meals for us. And you know, the meals is always either good or bad. You can always say this meal is horrible and just go and not eat and starve. Or you can say, what a beautiful meal, mother, thank you so much, but uh, I can only eat whatever I can. The world is like the, the food that mother served you, okay? Mother can serve you only as much as your karma has allowed you to serve, to be served. And you can be either one of the grumpy child, I don't want to eat anything, or be a good child and then accept what is given to you by your karma and then enjoy the world thanks to the mother that you are given this amazing light and brightness to be present in this glorious manifestation. Look at the, all the teeming lights of the absolute Brahman, the Shiva manifested in so many different goddesses that you are there in front of me. We can appreciate what we have or we can reject what we could not have and keep complaining. Shakta philosophy is to appreciate what we have. That doesn't mean that we cannot transcend beyond what we have and then be in the absolute form because Tripura plays both ways. That is the first thing we need to know. Her manifestation is to be recognized or visualized or meditated upon in three distinctive forms, structures. One in the form of matrika, another is in the form of the chakra. Spurata matmanaha pashe tada chakrasa sambhava. And the third, to recognize our <coughs> worship to her, every mode of worship, what does it mean to invoke her? What does it mean to offer little orgy? What does it mean to offer lamp? In light of self-realization, I don't know, whatever time allows, you guys will give me like a five minutes advance notice and I'll just uh, kind of go to the mode of trying to express whatever mother allows me to share with you. The Mula Agama for the study of Tripura Sundari is Vamakeshwara Mata. Vamakeshwara Mata has uh, two sections, one Nitya Shodashi Karanava and another is Yogini Hridayam. Bhaskar Raya wrote a commentary considering this as a single book. I come from the lineage of Amritananda and he wrote Arthuratnavali and Deepika. So there is a, a kind of slight commentarial difference. It's not a big difference. There's a, you know, sub, 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 So nevertheless, I'll cite one verse from the uh, Nityashwara Shikarana, the first verse. Ganesha Graha Nakshatra Yogini Rashi Rupinim Devim Mantra Mayuna Matrikam Peter Rupinim. 
द प्रेयर टू मदर त्रिपुर सुंदरी कम्स इन द फॉर्म अफ द प्रेयर्स टू मातृका एंड द प्रेयर द ट्वेल्व वर्सेज आर कंसिडर्ड सिद्ध मातृका स्तव द हिम्स इन प्रेज अफ द सिद्ध पर्फेक्टेड मातृका When you come to school in Gurukula, you are focused in understanding the meaning of the words. Your gurus teach you how to decipher the meaning of every word in many ways. There is a slight difference in agamic thinking in which we are taught to go to the basics of matrika. the not to the word and the reference but to the word and the phonemes that constitute the word and to recognize the frequencies the vibrations the energy that is within each and every phoneme and we have the bija mantras we have the kuta mantras the power that the words embody is not in the power to connote to refer to something else but to embody the shakti within the very sonic vibration of matrikas there is infinite ways of arranging and rearranging these matrikas we have the matrika krama we have malini krama believe me in malini krama there are so many different sub variations in the malini krama our own kubjika parampara has a slightly different order than the trika parampara so there are infinite variations in the structure of placing these 50 phonemes and millions of ways to arrange and restructure the matrikas and they form the basis for all the vigrahas of the deities they form the basis for all the manifestations of the yantras they form the basis for all the temple structures if you recognize the root the foundation of matrikas the arrangement of these 50 phonemes in all these possible ways you recognize the seven crore mantras you recognize their different iconic representations and the ways these temples are built the foundational science is the permutation of the 50 matrikas when you arrange as a ganesha the 50 phonemes are arranged separately grahas you have these nine different order nakshatras you have these 12 there are 27 nakshatras the way for arranging again the 50 phonemes yogini for the eight matrikas yogini pada here refers to eight matrikas and rashi 12 in 12 orders you place the same phonemes the 50 phonemes and then peters ka puja o oh, are the main puters kama roopa purna giri jalandara and udyana are our four primary peters but you can go all the way to 50 51 shakta peters distributed throughout the bharata varsha ताम ईकाराक्षरोधारा सारा सारा परा परा प्रणमा महादेवी परमानंदिणी इन ईच एंड एवरी फोर इम द टेक्स्ट गज ईकार सो वेन यू ट्रेस हर शक्ति प्रेजेंटेड इन ए सिंगल फोर इम ई दिस इज हाथ द कला द बेसिस फॉर कुंडलिनी शक्ति and for that you have to go read the way the brahmi and sarada uh, scripts kind of carved as a hardakala for ikara and in the current devanagari also there is some resonance they are left so the first thing is matrika gyana adhisthanam matrika shiva sutra if you read the shiva sutra it says gyana adhisthanam matrika It's a beautiful way the commentators play there, because what is Gyan then? It's a mitha Gyan. Our limited knowledge that's fragmented into vikalpas, 
And when these vikalpas are formed in different conceptual structures, the sigmatrika, the phonemes, distill that wisdom into these specific conceptual modes and express for us to allow actualizing the world. There is no difference in as far as we recognize in Shankara Advaita or Trika, as far as it comes to recognizing pure consciousness as the ultimate absolute foundation for the projected reality. But how do we recognize the world of our common sense experience? Our common sense experience is grounded on our vritti, our mental modification, how we have concepts regarding each and everything that, give, that is given to us, our stimulation to the particular responses in the world. And in this recognition, in this specific stimulation of the recognition of the world, we have these vrittis, that fragment, just like if you have a perforated uh, vase or like a pot, you know, all these little holes around and you put a lamp inside and the light spreads all around following that the uh, following the holes you know coming out through the holes that singular consciousness is allowed to take shape of each and every form according to the tunnels that it is allowed to manifest the way i see the world is not the way you see the world I'm slightly colorblind. Oftentimes, I personally get confused between blue and green. I'm, I'm confessing here. Not always, but some shades of green look like blue to me, some shades of, but there are many colorblind people in the world. And I don't actually know about dogs, but I'm told that they just have in black and white. Very simple world for them, just black and white. But the eagles have more complex world than we do. Dogs have the world very complex in uh, olfactory senses. They smell the world. The first time they reach out to the world, they want to smell it. Just like we are dogs, but we are the eye people. Just like dogs smell, we look at things. The world processed by me is different than the world processed by bats because they see through sonar resonance. So we cannot be rigid in the way that is give, the world is presented to me, but we can be rigid to the way that there is a process of consciousness unfolding according to our body, the way our body as a conduit allows to express what is being expressed, Parama, Bhagavati Tripura Sundari, who is being expressed that very pure chiti, chiti sotantra vishu it is the foundational pure consciousness that is being expressed through these conduits of our body, through different modalities of our sensory faculties and the mind and the ego. To recognize this is to understand Tripura Sundari. And how do we start that? You want to start from the top, that, be, that, that is your call. But if you want to start from the basics, go basics to the matrikas. Recognize the phonemes as the basis for the energies expressed. The second would be to recognize in her manifestation in the, in the mandala. What is this Navayoni chakra? The nine triangles. Chaturvi Shri Kandhaihi Shiva Yivati Vhi Panchavirapi Pravinna Vishambho Who are these Shri Kandhas, four Shri Kandhas and Shiva Yivati, the mistresses in the fivefold forms? These five triangles intersected by four constituting the Navayoni Chakra, nine triangles constituting Shri Yantra. Navarandhatma ko deha our body has nine orifices. 
this body is Sri Yantra. To recognize that identity, we have to have a flip of worldview. Because if you are told this body is the site of the sin and this body is something you have to despise, this is a different philosophy than to recognize that this body is Sri Yantra. This body is the site for the goddess to manifest. And that is a subtle variation we have. What we have here, the Havana, a constant libation happening, Chiti Vahni. Our consciousness is a metaphoric fire. Everything that enters into consciousness transforms into consciousness. When I see you, I grasp you, and that you is consciousness, my consciousness of you. I smell something, that object transforms into chiti, pure consciousness, because the thing I know about you is the consciousness only. Even if or even when I try to cognize you outside of my consciousness, that is still the consciousness cognized as outside of consciousness. Even when I negate consciousness, I am only confirming consciousness. That was the final stroke that uh, Bhagavad Pada Shankaracharya had in argument with the Chandabhanga, how do you recognize your own momentariness? Is this ever given to your consciousness? There is no, risk, there is no response to that. So this ultimate, this absolute yajna, sacrifice, is how the gaya, the objects of knowledge, are being offered in the jnanam, annam, in the process of cognition where the libation is offering, fire offering is happening into jnatri, the pure chiti bhani, pure consciousness, the fire. <coughs> and this is what forms the primordial yajna of all This is what forms the most pristine of all the agents that we are constantly performing. And all you need to recognize is how your own physical presence is a continuity of this primordial yajna, the first and foremost sacrifice happening. When you think of the body of the goddess, when you visualize her, with myriads, all the forms are her own forms. When you think of the sugar cane bow, for example, oh, I have surrendered to this bow, and that's your call. I'm not rejecting that. But read the Shastras. What do Shastras say? Manaha ikshudhanu. Why is the goddess carrying the bow? Of a sugar cane, for heavens, I mean, if this is a real battle going on, what are you going to do with your sugar cane bow? That's not even a good stick for a mother to beat up the children when they are misbehaving. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> so, so sugar cane bow doesn't scare. It is the mind. Manaha ikshudhano. Raga pasa desho ankusha. So, you, it's and every. When we recognize the significance, the symbolism of these weapons and gestures, then we get to the point that these are all tropes for meditation. These are not simple form of idolatry. Uh, by uh, a good grace, if you happen to come to my place, I have all different statues. The house is turning into museum. And I was fortunate enough to invite one great sadhu. Let me not mention the order, because that would be a little disrespectful. And the sadhu made one comment that uh, people like these idol collectors bring shame to Hindu dharma. 
<laughs> I told him, when I talk about these absolute formless God in the West, they are already tired and sick of listening to this. These images are the ones my students in the West love to learn now. The time has passed. You guys had your time to talk about the absolute without form. Now it is our time to talk about the absolute in the myriad manifestations. The body is not to be discarded anymore. The body is to be recognized as the expression of the mother. This is the age in which we recognize our presence being in the world. We have denied the world for so long. That has made us so weak. And sometimes a little pathetic and dishonest to ourselves. We like good drinks and then we say, I, I don't like any good drinks. Sincerity should be the first thing of a spiritual quest. And I think, I hope, our surrendering to the mother will give us that. We don't need to lie to the mother. I'm, I'm, I have desires, okay? Ichha shakti mahatri purusundari. Let me repeat. Ichha shakti mahatri purusundari. Who is Tripura Sundari? She is the power in the form of Ichha, desire, volition, will, you name it. I have no desire, and I believe you, really, because you are bereft of the mother. She has shunned you from her presence. <laughs> I'm above desire. Maybe rocks don't have desire. I've never asked, what do you want? I mean, like when I see a cup, I don't say, what do you want, Mr. Cup? You are like a cup. You have no desire. I have desire. Because I have the grace of the mother to have desire. When I'm done with my body, and then that's OK to not have desire. to recognize the divine in our presence. Requires that sincerity to embrace what we are. And that doesn't mean that we use this acceptance in the worst possible form, you know. We can embrace it in the most beautiful form. And immediately people think, oh my gosh, this will lead us to debauchery and all. That's sick. Is that all you think? If I ever accept the world, then I will accept in the worst possible form? That's, that's it. Because you never accepted your mind. That's, how you, that's why you think that way. But no, it's a beautiful world. Maybe I'll cite one or two verses from Amritananda, the great guru, who wrote a text. My Guruji, Pandit Brajbal of Divedi, spent <coughs> years of time. They're like about 40 verses. And many of these lines are lost. Whatever he could synthesize, some 20 different manuscripts. And not even then, not all are completed. But I would like to sing a couple of verses that he brought, Guruji brought to edition. Chidvilasastava. So Prakash Shiva Murti Rekika Tadvimarsa Tanu Rekika Tayo Samarasya Bapurishyate Para Paduka Parashivatma No Guru Chitra Bhanu Shashi Bhanu Purvaka Tritri Bheda Niyate Shubhastu Shu Tattadatmakataya Vimarsanam Tat samasti guru paduka japaha. Of course, it's a long prayer, and I can't translate the whole thing for you now. But what is, what is guru, and what is the visualization of guru paduka? Because for all entering into tantra, the first thing, people are mortified to have a guru. Because if you have a guru, then you are turned into sheep. Because your imagination of a guru comes from the sheep and the separate metaphor from the Abrahamic tradition. A guru is the light. He cannot lead you to be blind. If he tells you to follow blindly, that's not light. Light never asks you to, blind, to be blind. So what is this light? The self manifest, self effulgent self-illuminating aspect of consciousness. 
चिति स्वयं प्रकाशा सदि स्वयं प्रकाश सेल्फ इल्यूमिनेटिंग इज व्हाट कॉन्शियसनेस इज एंड दैट इज शिवा टू रिकॉग्नाइज दैट सो प्रकाशता दैट इज वेयर द त्रिका सिस्टम कम्स दैट इट इज नॉट जस्ट बीइंग इल्यूमिनेटेड इट इज अ फुल एफर्मेशन ऑफ ओन्स ओन प्रकाशमयता तद विमर्शत अनुरेकिका when you have the samarasa an absolute fusion between prakasha the illuminating mode of consciousness with this reaffirming recognizing mode of vimarsha that is when you have the paduka the two feet of guru who is the guru your consciousness is the guru the guru tells you to do something you do not the world guru you never listen to world guru <laughs> it's only when we listen to world guru when that guru aligns with this guru inside <sighs> okay let me read one verse here and then i'll stop soon सुप्रकाश शिव एव भास्कर तमर्श विभवा मरीचय यसयति वेद्यमंडल तस् पूजन महंतया मते द वेरी सेल्फ इल्यूमिनेटिंग कॉन्शियसनेस इज द सन एंड टू रेकग्नाइज द सूर्य रश्मि मंडला इज टू रेकग्नाइज टू हैव द विमर्श रिफ्लेक्टिव कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ दैट सेल्फ इल्यूमिनेटिंग मोड ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस एंड व्हेन यू डू द मंडला पूजा लाइक ए श्री यंत्र व्हाट इज दैट पूजा टू रेकग्नाइज द वेद्य मंडला व्हाट एवर द व्हाटेवर द रेडियस ऑफ मंडला दैट मैनिफेस्ट विद इन द गिवन मोड ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस is to recognize the pure presence of consciousness in the reflective mode of vimarsha as long as we do not actualize the reflective mode of consciousness in every single illumination puja is not happening oh i have to feed the goddess and i have no rejection to this devotional mode because the first is where we start from that is the that is where we start from but if you want to go to tripura we have to be willing to go to this para puja the absolute worship in which we recognize our pure being our pure presence and every single mode of consciousness as actually the modes of puja that is why abhinava gupta says tava chaka kilana stuti rambike sakala shabda mai kilate tanu निखिल मूर्ति सुमे भवदन्नयो मनसी जासु बहि प्रसरासु च इति विचिन्त्य शिवे समिता शिवे जगति जात मयत्नवशादिदम स्तुति जपार्चन चिन्तन वर्जिता न खलु काचन काल कलास्ति मे तव चुका का तव चका किल न स्तुति रम्बिको मदत व्हाट प्रेयर एम आई ऑट टू डू टू यू फॉर सकल शब्द मई की लते तनु एवरी सिंगल वर्ड कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स योर बॉडी आई मीन आई एम गोन हैव ओनली लिमिटेड वर्ड्स आई कैन एक्सप्रेस ऑल द पॉसिबल वर्ड्स एंड सी इज कम्प्राइज ऑफ ऑल द वर्ड्स हाउ कैन आई प्रेयर निखिल मूर्ति सु मे भव धन एवरीथिंग आई सी आई सी योर प्रेजेंस मदर इज प्रेजेंट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द डॉटर एंड सन वाइफ एंड पार्टनर एंड 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 मदर एंड and father and friends and all the animals and birds and rocks and every single thing is an unfolding of the mother and some of them may not even be real like you say it is real manasi jasu some are just my mental figments of imagination some of them some of them are my fantasies some of them are my memory images distorted from the original forms all of them are expression of chiti this very pure and pristine consciousness when having this recognition 
what happens then? Nakaluka chanakala kalasta. I do not have a moment of time in my life when I'm not praying you. For everything I do, everything I think, every word I speak is your prayer. Yes, to abide in this teaching is difficult. It is challenging for us. Living in the normal world, But the world today is very complicated. It's not the time of the rishis. Therefore, we cannot practice these things. Somebody says that, that is wrong. The world has not changed. The world is composed of three things. Pramata, Pramana, and Prameya. The knower and the processes of knowledge and the objects of knowledge. Objects of knowledge have changed. Our ego changes a little bit, ups and downs. The processes of knowledge may be different. Ultimately, these triads never change. And how we process the stimuli, the given world, is based on the prism, the, the glasses through which we see the world. The world processed by the glasses, the mirrors of this raga, dvesha, and moha, passion, aversion, and delusion. We are constantly looking into reality by whether I like it or I hate it or I have no idea about it. The world is a constant. At least that is how the people have processed before and that is how we process today and that is how our species will continue to process tomorrow. Just because we have some cell phones and internet doesn't mean that we stop liking or disliking things. Maybe those days they ate some roots and today we have some sophisticated dishes that we call like a cake, happy birthday, Sangeeta ji, you know. <laughs> but the world hasn't changed. Appearance changes. Instead of cooking a potato, you might be eating a dish. But objects are objects, subject is subject. The world hasn't changed. So therefore, the philosophy is the constant. Our ability to recognize the triadic structure is also constant. And our ability to transcend the triadic manifestation, triadic unfolding is also constant. And at the end, I would like to urge all of you you are the best of all that is out there to carry on this light. And you have this best opportunity to study with the best of the teachers that you could dream of. Whatever the virtue you may have done in your past life and your parents have done in this life has brought you here in this Gurukula. If you learn good today, you will carry on this light to the globe. Today I am alone, gone from Gurukula to this strange world. But you are my brothers. And I hope you will join me one day to carry on this light, to torch, to illumine the world. For we are Bharata, we love light and we surrender to truth, to light, and may Mother give us the strength to preserve this light and to carry on this torch, to illumine the world for the global welfare. Thank you so much. I welcome any questions if you may have.